we'll go to the next uh, keynote session uh, by Mr. Kenny, CEO, Astro Radio and Rocket Fuel Entertainment, Director Astro, on the topic of marketing strategies versus a new media universe. Uh, Mr. Kenny is the CEO of Astro Radio Malaysia, number one radio network and Rocket Fuel Entertainment, a media and entertainment a record label and talent management company. In addition, he is also a director of Astro Media Solutions, spearheading integrated media solution, driving advertising revenue and adex share across Astro Group's media properties. Mr. Kenny is also serving as chairman, communications and multimedia content forum. Prior to joining Astro, Kenny uh, held senior position at Universal Music Group, Unilever and CNI Holdings. He holds a Bachelor of Computer Science from the University of Manchester, UK. I warmly welcome Mr. Kenny, CEO of Astro Radio and Rocket Fuel Entertainment, to present the topic, Marketing Strategies versus New Media Universe. Mr. Kenny. Hello, good afternoon. First, I want to test whether you can see the- Yes, I can see you and your screen is also shared. Okay, good. So I'll take it from here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Kenny. I'm from Malaysia and I'm from a company called Astro and we are the largest media and broadcasting company uh, in the country. So we have several different types of business. So we have TV, we have radio, uh, we have podcasting, we have e-commerce, we have TV shopping, we also have uh, broadband. Uh, so we, we are, you know, cover most of it. And also, of course, we have a large digital business. So today I'll be sharing a little bit about uh, marketing strategies and media. I know that today's conference is about digital marketing, but today um, in my session, I just want to you know make, go to a little bit more on the strategy part instead of just the technical part. Since now the, the previous speaker did a very, very good job on marketing automation, and I myself learned a lot. So um, now I want to bring us away from just the marketing technology, marketing automation, and go into marketing strategy um, you know, and, and the whole media landscape and how digital marketing fits into everything and just to rethink of how we want to go for the market that we want to um, talk to. So I just want to mention that, you know, this is the new media universe. It's a very, very different universe that we are dealing in. And if you look at it, this is the total universe. Digital is only a small part of it. And if you look at the, the way that, you know, what the revenue is, um, the biggest is, of course, gaming. Second is video. Third is social and fourth is audio. So usually when you talk about digital marketing, a lot of people get confused it's because it's a very big term, right? So, but if you break it down, you know, the four biggest so-called digital marketing uh, or digital media revenue and digital media platforms are actually these in the world. And this is, uh, and of course, the biggest one is actually gaming, which a lot of people are not really invested in, uh, which I will recommend a lot of people to study of how to move into this um, new space called gaming. Next is video, which includes TV and OTT and streaming and all those kind of things. Then we talk about social and then we have uh, audio, which is radio slash audio plus uh, audio streaming. Um, this is just, um, you know, uh, a very quick summary of the map that I showed you before. It's by a guy called Ivan Shapiro. It's very brilliant. If you want to Google his name, you can read more all about him. And this is the summary that he gave. Uh, in summary, um, the media and, the, you know, the, what we are working as as marketing professionals, the whole media world and marketing world is becoming very, very big. And we need to know, uh, you know, where it's moving so that when we invest our marketing dollars, we know where to invest in and we know where the audiences are. So this one is the, the ever-expanding media universe, uh, as I've mentioned. So we have got traditionally print, TV, radio, and billboards. This is before digital. Uh, now we've got TV or what we call TV video. We've got audio, out of home, digital, and print. And these are the key ones. TV video, um, you know, these are all the things that you need to learn if you want to play in the TV video game. Again, a lot of this, you know, three quarter of what you see here are actually digital. Um, and uh, and uh, this is where you should also spend time and investment and money and also effort in learning what these are so that when you are investing in mar digital marketing, you know what to uh, invest in. Uh, in audio, uh, what in the old days we call it radio, uh, radio, but now we call it audio. And you have all these different things. You know, FMAM is a traditional one. And then the rest are the new um, platforms for audio uh, ma digital marketing. We have out of home, again, traditionally, we have billboards, which are what we call static out of home. Now we have digital out of home, mobile out of home. No, so we have all these kind of things uh, in our home where it's also part of your uh, marketing playbook and marketing strategy playground. 
And of course, digital, where I think most of us are spend our time. But even digital, if you look at it, actually it's spread across many things. So um, if you are just thinking digital about just Facebook, just Google, you know, and Instagram, I think you're thinking about a very small subset of the universe. There's actually a huge component of uh, digital that we should think of. So, But everything here that you see that I've just shown you from here upwards, uh, or actually everything is digital. And everything is what we call the marketing and the media uh, world that we need to uh, look into as far as our strategy is concerned. But before we start, before I look into technology, before I look into media, like I said, it's, it's, it's important for us to understand the marketing strategy, what we are doing uh, in terms of messaging, who we want to message to before we choose what kind of tools that we want to go after. So I always give this example of, you know, this one um, to many people is a bag and always a purse to guys. And, you know, everywhere is just a normal purse, it's a normal bag. But a lot of women in the world, when they see this, they know what this is, right? This is a Chanel bag. I forgot what's the model, but this costs about 10,000 US dollars. So to the women who are buying this, they don't call this a bag. They call this pride. They call this uh, peer pressure. They can call it anything they want. But the reason they buy it is not because it's a bag. The reason why they buy it is because it gives them value or something. It gives them a status. It gives them self-satisfaction. It gives them other things than just being a bag. So people who buy this don't buy it because you want to carry something. You buy it because it's something, it's a, it's a different meaning to you. So why am I saying this is because most of your audience and most of your customers, when they buy something from you or the people that you're marketing to, they don't look at the features. They don't look at those things which you usually talk about because um, they are not looking at that. When people buy from you or they buy from your competitors, they are buying it for a different reason. They're buying it for a reason that, you know, you need to understand why. Like I said, for people who buy this channel bag, they're buying it because of something else. It's not because it's a good bag. Um, people buy a Rolex not because it's a watch. If you want to buy a watch, you can buy easily for 20 US dollars. But a Rolex can cost 20,000 US dollars, 30,000 US dollars. And people don't buy a Rolex because it's a watch. So even if your watch has the best features in the world, it can last 100 years. People won't buy it for you because it's a watch. People buy a Rolex because it means something to them. It's a different meaning. Uh, in the old days, people buy IBM not because it's a computer, because in the old days, in, you know, in the 80s and 90s, there is everybody in the IT world knows that if you buy an IBM, you won't go wrong and you won't lose your job. If something goes wrong, you can blame IBM. You don't need to blame the IT manager. So people buy IBM not because it has good features. People buy IBM because it's the most stable uh, you know, company in the world in terms of IT. And many people in Asia, they buy luxury cars. But in like, for example, in a country like Malaysia or Singapore or many other countries here in Southeast Asia, people buy a Mercedes not because it's a prestige car. It's not because it's a good car. I mean, the other cars are BMW, Audi, Volvo. Um, that you can buy. But most people buy a Mercedes here uh, because the main idea is that because it's a good second-hand value. It has got nothing to do with the car. It has got nothing to do with the brand. Uh, it has got all to do with if I buy this car, I can sell it at a very good second-hand value. So the reason why people buy things are not obvious. So as marketers, as marketing professionals uh, who are in this room and those who are listening to me, I think that the key thing is you have to understand who your audience is because when you talk to your audience, you need to send them the right message at the right time on the right platform. So you must know why they are buying certain things or why they're avoiding certain things before you choose your media, before you choose your marketing strategy. So this is the core of um, your strategy. So like I said, the strategy first, this Sergio Zyman was the ex-chief uh, marketing officer of Coca-Cola twice during their biggest heydays uh, in the 90s, um, coming to the early 2000s. And he said that actually, you know, for him, the ultimate objective marketing and the purpose that we are all here actually is only four things, right? Get more people to buy more things more frequently at higher prices. Only these four. If you are not doing any of these four, you're not doing marketing. And a lot of it that we do is just a waste of time. We are doing just because people ask us to do or we are just following somebody. If whatever you do as a marketing strategy doesn't do these four things or any of these four or combination of these four, then you are in trouble. And he says that retention or loyalty are useless if no conversion is happening. So it says, what is conversion? Same thing. You get more people to buy more things more frequently at higher prices. You must, as a marketing strategy, you need to do these four things. So I think what I need to talk about is from an objective of marketing and the objective of what we are doing in the digital world, right? So the thing about it is that I think when we talk to our audience, when we talk to our customers, when we talk to the people you know, in, in the world that we are in, it is about relationships. So it's something like dating. 
it's a two-step process. It's a three-step process, four-step process. It's not, it's not immediate. And the objective is not media, is not you know, a lot of PR. The objective is not above the line, below the line. These are all technical terms. It doesn't really matter. It's not about CSR. It's not about ESG. It's also not about social media. It's not about points, redemption. The, the objective, I think all of us have to remember is that whatever that you're doing, your strategy, you have to get more people to buy more, more frequently at higher prices. And that is the key. And um, in terms of marketing strategy and how you pick your media and which digital tool do you use, which marketing tool do you use, uh, which media tool do you use, there are six A's um, that I usually tell people that you have to list down and you have to understand and you have to appreciate before you can choose which tool you're going to use for the audience that you have. So these are the six A's. Today, I will only focus on two, which is like the two yellow ones, which is audience and addressable. I'll quickly talk about the rest on, in the white part uh, so that when you go back, uh, you can have a reference to them. The first one is attention. Again, I won't spend a lot of time here, but I just want to pass this message for those of us who come up, for those of you who are a little bit more junior and you just come out in the marketing world, one of the key things you understand is that most prospects that don't buy are confused about the offer. That means whatever message that you're sending, people don't know or they're confused and they won't buy from you. So this is the problem with the creative world where people are trying to be too funny or too creative and people don't know what your message is. I think that is the problem. So we need to be able to send a message to a lot of people about who we are, our brand, what we stand for, what we want people to do, and we need to send in a very clear message to them. And the biggest word that you will hear now is what we call attention. And a lot of people are doing what we call attention metrics. A lot of people in the marketing world are doing what attention metrics. I mean, conversion is one thing, um, but if you don't have or reach or impressions are good, but if you don't have the right attention, you're not doing your job well as marketers. So there are three things that is important to attention. One is how, how long a time you can hold their attention. Second thing is whether people can understand uh, what your message is. And the third one, whether they can recall uh, what you're saying. So if you have these three things, that is what attention. So when you develop a marketing strategy, a message or a campaign, these three will be important to you. So this is uh, what I call the four wheels of what we need to do uh, in terms to, to get people's uh, attention. Um, so when you have your, your audience, you have your media or your marketing, then you need to align these four things, right? Creatives, your location, when and where you put the message, uh, your message, your timing when you do it. And then, you know, what we put, when these four things, what we call the condition. When you have these four things, you're actually conditioning your audience to understand what your message is. So, and this is important uh, when we send out a message to somebody. So I won't concentrate on this, but you can go back and read. What I'm saying here is that there are different types of messages that you need to send. Um, depending on who the customer is and what is their position in the market. You cannot have one message for everybody. And these are what we call the assets that you need to build. So I just want to uh, you know, reconfirm here that actually content is no more king. It used to be the king, but now content is not the king anymore. And who is the king? The king is anybody who owns the platform, who owns the content, who owns the IP, the intellectual property, and also what we call first party data audience. Um, you know, uh, that's that's the that's what we need to do. And this, all these four things are what we call the last mile. So this one is very important for us to understand and for us to start building so that we have a pro proper uh, ecosystem to be able to market to the people that we want. And if we talk about three components of marketing and media, you've got the client side, you've got the agency, some of you are from agency, and some of you are on the media side uh, or publishers, right? So you have three things and all three components are trying to form their own ecosystem their own platform, their own content, their own IP, and their own first party that, uh, audience. And the best is to be able to see who can do this the fastest and who can do this the best. But what I put the red arrows there is show that, that if yourself do not have the complete ecosystem, then you need to partner with either the agency or the media partners to build your platform and to build your uh, whatever that you have. And uh, again, if you're an agency and you don't have all these four, then you need to partner with a client or a media partner to have a combination so that you become what I call the king or the queen uh, of your ecosystem in terms of marketing. And this is a, you know, an example of why it's so important. If you look, look at Amazon, Amazon just spent, I think, about one point something billion or two billion US dollars to buy Roomba, which actually, essentially is actually a... Uh, what we call a vacuum cleaner, a robot. So people are asking, why does Amazon buy a vacuum cleaner? They are really so powerful, right? And actually, Amazon is one of the most powerful marketing and data companies in the world. And one of the biggest reasons why they buy a Roomba is because the Roomba has the power to be able to collect data of your house. It can map your house. It can tell, the, it can tell you what, 
is around your house by you know scanning the objects and it can tell how big your house is and if if in the future you can also listen to your house and you can actually detect who is in the house so this is a very powerful tool uh, that they have to collect data you know in a lot of homes to add to their other data that they have so this is what we call the the battle for first party audience and that is the reason why they spend two billion dollars just to buy a vacuum cleaner company so like i said you know if you are in the tv video business so you have to look for the last mile whoever owns all of this will win audio uh if you are battling in the digital audio streaming space then what the important thing is about local local music local podcasts and the more local the is the better uh if you are dealing with out of home then your format will need to uh improve so static billboards are no longer uh powerful you have to keep changing the format um, and for digital for those of us in digital marketing i will advise us to look for this word called premium inventory not just inventory but premium inventory programmatic has a lot of issues it's okay it's good but it doesn't give you the premium inventory that you need to reach your target audience so look for any partners that have premium inventory and we talk about audience like i said you must first understand who the audience that you're talking to and different kinds you know like i already gave the example of the first few you know then i talk about dominoes right and you know people who buy dominoes don't buy it for the pizza necessarily they buy it because there's a promise that they can get the food within 30 minutes people who go to drink starbucks uh is you no know, starbucks doesn't have the best coffee in the world but they sell i think they're the biggest coffee seller in the world um, and they have the most coffee chain in the world people don't go there because it's the best coffee people go there because it's the best place to sit and to uh you know do your work or to study um, so they is what I call they have the best halfway house in the world. And that is the reason why people go there. So if you understand your audience, you can build your business and your marketing message around the audience that you have. Again, I won't go into this. Um, these are all additional slides that you can read. What, what I'm saying is that um, in terms of your audience that or why your customers, you know, when they buy, they usually they are within any of these three um, uh, what called angles or they, they look at you or they want to buy something they look at these three things and they would this depends on where you are they will buy because of uh, what you are actually giving them an example is apple people who buy apple is because apple has product leadership apple has features benefits but it has a limited range people don't buy it because it's cheap people don't buy it because there's a huge range people buy it because it's it works the way it's supposed to work and it has features and those who focus on product leadership, uh, like Apple, you know, doesn't have a big range to them. They're not customizable. Those of us who take AirAsia, who fly AirAsia as an airline, um, because it's operational excellence, and those who buy it from there because it's cheap, it's cost, there's a cheap cost and there's a convenience, and the total cost is actually cheap. So that's the reason why people sit AirAsia. It's nothing to do with the quality of the plane. There's nothing to do with the quality of the experience or the service. It has all to do with cost and convenience, and so on and so forth. So you have to understand, again, where your company sits on this um thing and then uh which angle your company sits in and then you know then you have to sell accordingly to the message that is consistent with what they're expecting uh, i won't go through all this but you can when you have the deck you can download it and then you can um check so um so in terms of audience, I think you first, we have to first talk about, this one is not only just digital, but it's everything, right? So you have to look at audience. There are actually four categories. So you've got the watch, listen, read, and what we call uh, advocate, which are all the uh, KOLs and talents and influencers. And this is how people used to buy audience in the past. But now um, when you look at um, how we look at audience, what we need to do is actually to look at them as a total audience, not by media. So we don't look at say, oh, what can I do on Facebook? Or what can I do on Google? Or, or what can I do on TV? That's not the, the right question. The right approach is that who are my audience? And what are all the related tools that I can use to reach that audience? So you have to think from an audience perspective, not from a platform perspective. And um, for those who are looking at TV or video or YouTube, you know, Facebook videos or Reels or TikTok videos, you have to understand that it's audience first. You have to look at unified views. You have to look at views of your audience across all these platforms. Um, and you know, uh, for those of you who are doing traditional TV buying, um, GRP or CPP actually is no more in fashion. You have to look at CPM and CPV. Uh, and then the other things, like I said, is the other thing that we have to look at is you know, with the cookie uh, going off, we have to look at the new thing called addressability and targeting. And uh, it's what we call addressable audience. And this is something that is very important. 
Um, and this is something that, and I'll give you an example, like Astro has launched, uh, you know, we, we, we are the biggest TV provider in Malaysia. We are satellite, we have broadband TV, and, you know, we have pay TV and everything. So right now what we can do is that um, we have what we call addressable TV. So we have, um, you know, you can have two different homes watching the same um, TV program and we can send two different advertisements to two different homes watching the same um, program. Uh, you can't do that in the past. So if somebody is watching a cricket game or somebody is watching a football game at the same time, different families uh, will or different TVs will receive different advertisements depending on the audio segment. This is what we call addressable TV. And this word is very important because addressable audience is going to be a key thing and you need first party data, you need first party audience um, and, you know, to fulfill it. So you have addressable TV, addressable audio, addressable portals are what we usually do on web and app. And then we have addressable advocates, which are key opinion leaders or influencers. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on activation. I just want to mention that uh, in order to curate the content that you want, you know, in terms of marketing strategy and you want to reach your customer, you want to reach audience, you have to understand, um, you know, what is um, their um, affinity to, right? And for example, in Malaysia, where I come from, the rank number one is culinary, which is food. Number two is music, right? The rest is number three, four, and five. So as long as you build your strategy, your content, your activation around these things, uh, you won't go wrong, right? So you have to know by region and by culture. Uh, and I'm sure from uh, those of you who are from you know, different parts of the world, you understand where you are from, but you need to also understand who you're reaching out to and what is their affinity. Advocacy is about influences. It's a big part of digital uh, marketing, which a lot of people try to go into, but they're not sure. And um, I, I previously conducted a workshop on working with influencers. I won't really go in too much into detail. I summarize everything into uh, one slide. Um, and I just want to mention that if you're working with influencers or you're working as going through a trading with influencers or you're looking at the influencer campaign as far as the digital marketing campaign, you have to be careful of um, a couple of things. One is that followers and fans are two different things. A lot of people have a lot of followers, but they don't have fans. So you need to differentiate between who are, you know, even if somebody say, you know, I have a million followers, it doesn't mean that they have a million fans. Uh, the fans are more important than the followers because fans are the one that will determine how, how engaged people are or how much people will be affinity to buy the product that you're, that you're selling. Um, and you have to differentiate between influencers who are just doing posting or influencers who help you to market. Those are two different kinds. And influencers are not advertisements. Influencers, they do their own thing. They create their own content. They are not just there to post with a picture. If they're just sitting there and post with a picture, those are ads and those are not influencers. So you have to understand there are different kinds. And here, the, the more you understand about influencers, the easier and the more powerful you can work with them. And these are the things that, um, again, I won't go too much into detail. Um, these are things what we call you should look out for um, you know, as we move into the new uh, media world. Um, you have to look at regulations are changing and you, you just have to follow it. A lot of marketers don't follow. They don't look and study regulations in different, different countries or different aspects of different media and different content. Um, what kind of regulations? You need to know that so that you can uh, react. Uh, brand safety is one. AI ML means artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, the, of course, uh, metaverse web tree is a big thing. Um, yeah, then you know, you, more and more you have to differentiate between if you have audience data you have to understand the difference between demographic and psychographic is two different things. A person who own, who earns 2,000 US dollars a month doesn't mean that they will spend 2,000 US dollars a month. So that's the difference between psychographic and demographic. Uh, TikTok and Roblox are two key things so I, I, I would recommend everybody to really, really dive into to understand how the mechanics work because this is the future of marketing for now. AOTM means is the what we call the app of the moment. And uh, it's, I'm, I think from the digital marketing standpoint, be very, very careful um, because there are some apps at this moment will seem particularly attractive, but after a while it will drop out. So they're mostly fat. So be careful of over-investing in what we call the app of the moment. Uh, vernacular or cultural is important. Uh, you know, we live in a very diversified world. You have to understand and you have to market to um, specific cultures and vernacular, which means our languages. Um, and the other one is West versus China. A lot of best practices uh, are coming out from the West, which is US and UK. But I highly recommend for us to look at um, those that are coming out from the East, China. I know India has very, very good technology. So it's coming out, Japan, Korea. Don't forget about these countries. Um, again, go local and you won't go wrong. And this is my end note. 
uh, when you are trying to you know um, send out a message to people, you need to choose uh, what you want to say, right? And you, you know you can't be all three. You need to and when you choose a media partner or you choose any uh, agency or you choose a media platform, just remember no one can give you all three. You have to pick two. Uh, and you know you choose the best partner that you have or you choose the best um, platform that you have. Uh, don't be greedy and you know you won't go wrong. But the most important thing is to understand your target market, your audience, and you go after them uh, based on the strategy that you have picked. So that's all I have to say. My 30 minutes are up. If you want, you can download the share from the slides from here from SlideShare, or you can uh, reach the um, the organizers uh, and they will give you the slides. So uh, thank you very much for your time. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Dear participants, I sincerely appreciate your attention today. Um, please vote for Mr. Kenny on the presentation done on the topic of marketing strategies versus a new media universe. And Mr. Kenny, thank you for your time and effort. Also appreciate the information and advice you have shared in GDMS.